Hey, what's up everyone? It's Derek from Nerd or Die, and today I'm going to introduce you to our free minimal alert maker. This free download lets you customize almost everything about it. It can be installed in a few clicks, and it supports all streaming platforms like Twitch, YouTube, and more. Let's get right into it. The alert maker can be downloaded from nerdordie.com. The link is in the description below. It's a pay what you want item, so if you find it valuable, feel free to pick any amount you like. Of course, we encourage everyone to give it a try for free by using zero for the price. You can use these alerts with basically every overlay or widget in our shop, and we offer both free and premium overlays in there as well, so make sure to check those out. One last general thing about the Nerd or Die website is that we do run giveaways every now and then, so if you see the giveaway option here in the menu, then that means we have one active, and you can click that and check out anything we got going on. And also, don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell if you're interested in more free streaming content. We've created this to work with Streamlabs so that we can make something that has tons of options as well as be easy to share and set up. If you're not using Streamlabs, this might be a good reason to give it a try and hopefully you'll see why by the end of this video. Another cool thing about this download is that we'll have a templates folder included, which will have designs done by ourselves and members of the community. This will allow you to look through a couple of designs and quickly import these into your alerts. At the time of this video being created, we don't have all the templates added in, so look forward to more templates as time goes by. You'll find multiple timestamps in the description of this video, so make sure to check those out to help you jump around the video if needed. Now let's go ahead and start setting things up. The first thing that we need to do is download the alert files from nerdordie.com and unzip everything onto our computer. I have the pack here on my desktop. You'll see a few folders as well. We'll include a link to this video guide as well as templates that you can import into your alerts, which we'll get into a bit later. Click the alerts quick setup link in the download of files to begin installing these alerts. If you'd like, choose Create Widget Theme and name it something appropriate such as Minimal. The import link will only override your alert package. This means you can combine these alerts with any other scene collection you've made in Streamlabs. If you want to save your old alerts, then it's highly recommended to do this in a new widget theme. If you already have a widget theme that you want to import into, feel free to import it here. Select Use for the profile you want to import into, then we want to go ahead and navigate to the alert box and copy our unique URL. We'll paste this in as a browser source in our streaming software. We recommend setting the size of the width and height to the width and height that you stream at. If you need to scale down, you can do so directly inside of OBS Studio. And if you're using Streamlabs OBS, you might not need to complete this step if your alert box is already added in. Now go ahead and run a few tests to make sure that things are working properly. And that's basically everything that we need to do to get up and running with these free alerts. But of course, we wanna make sure that you have tons of options that allows you to customize these alerts as your own. This alert set makes it easy to make simple changes like the font and background colors, or you can make more advanced changes like changing up the layout, animation speed, and animation directions. Before I forget to mention this, we added variations for resubscribers and top tips. You'll find these under the alert variation tab. Now these alerts have their own custom setup options as well. You'll be able to move your options to each alert pretty easily. So don't worry about copying options from one alert to another. I'll show you how to do this once we've looked over the custom options. Let's go ahead and take a look at the donation alert. You can add sounds normally through Streamlabs as you would with any other alert, and the alert delay will work normal as well. But let's move to the custom fields tab. This is where the real magic will happen with all the options we've included. So to understand these options, I wanna mention that we have two basic areas of these alerts. The first is the primary area, and this will usually be where the name is, and by default, it will have a white background with black text. And then the second area is the alternate area. And this is where we usually put things like new tip or follow. And this has a black background by default with white text. 
So the first option that we'll see here is do we want to have the top and bottom area the same width? And this is referencing the primary and alternate area. If this option is set to yes, then the width of the primary and alternate area will always be the same. When set to no, which is the default option, then they will have different widths unless the primary area is shorter or less wide than the alternate area. It will actually get automatically matched up to make things look kind of nice. So the next option we have is text alignment, which will align your text to the left, right, or center of your alert areas. The main font lets you pick the font used for these alert areas. Then we have the horizontal and vertical anchors. So I'm gonna take a second here and actually update some of the options and show you kind of what we can do just with these couple ones that we've covered so far. Every once in a while, I've noticed that when I make changes and test the alerts really quickly, they don't always update right away. This isn't a bug or anything. You might just have to wait a couple of seconds, hit save settings again, or just refresh the cache inside of your source properties and then go ahead and test again. The horizontal anchor will let you align the complete alert to the left, center, or right of your screen. And then the vertical anchor will actually let you position it towards the top or bottom and anchor it to that. Then we have these offset options here. And these options will let you move the alert in the amount of pixels you want away from your anchors. So if I wanted to align things to the right, let's say, and then bump it away from the right edge, I can increase the horizontal offset. And then if I even wanted to move it from the bottom edge, which I switch my vertical anchor towards the bottom, I can increase that as well. Then when we go ahead and test the alert, we'll see that it's anchored towards the bottom right of our alert area, but offset away from these anchors by the amount of pixels that we use for the offset sliders. And before we wanna move on, one thing that I do wanna mention is that if you wanna have things horizontally centered, then you want to set your horizontal offset to zero, which is the default, and use the center options for the horizontal anchor. This will then make everything nice and centered for you, and you can use the vertical offset to adjust it away from the top or bottom of your screen. Now, moving on, we'll see the transform origin. This is the origin point of the animations. So this is the point at which your animation begins. The X option represents the horizontal position of the origin and the Y option is the vertical position. So for example, if you choose X right and then Y bottom, and we'll go ahead and just test this really quickly, the animation of the boxes will begin at the bottom right of both the primary and alternate area. Moving on, we have the animation speed, which is a percentage multiplier of the animation speed of the alert in total. For example, when you set this to 200, this doubles the speed of the alert. If this is set to 50, then this halves the speed of your alert. The next option, pause time, is how long we wait before hiding the alerts. The animation speed multiplier will affect this for now. If the animation speed is set to 200 or two times the normal speed, and your pause time is set to five, it will only pause for 2.5 seconds before animating out. So make sure to adjust this up accordingly. Now the horizontal padding and vertical padding is the space between the left, right, top, and bottom of the alert boxes. Then the main area for the text template is where you have a text template for your main area. This is something that you can use dynamic tags in, such as months, amount, and count in here. Basically, if you've used the message template area by default in Streamlabs, you can use any of those dynamic tags in these sections. And moving on, we'll see a lot more options for the main area, which include the font color, the font size, the font weight, and the background color, which is the background color for the main area. As I mentioned, this is currently white, but also we have the background opacity. This slider affects the opacity amount for the main area. So if you don't like a solid white background or whatever color you set this to, you can lower this value to make the background more see-through and set it to zero to get rid of it completely. Then we have the top and bottom border height, which affects the height of the border for the respective slider. We can set these options to zero to have no border shown, which you'll see that the default for the top one is actually at zero. 
Then we have the border color, which is simply the color of the border area. Next, we have alternate area options. And you'll have one specific to the alternate area, which is, do you want this tag above or below the primary area? This allows you to change the position of the alternate area, which by default is at the bottom. Moving on for the alternate area, we also have a text template here, which again lets you use your dynamic tags. And then we have similar options for the main area that we had before that affect the alternate area instead, which are font color, font size, font weight, background color, background opacity, slider. And with all that, that wraps up all of the custom options that we've built in. But finally, you can use the user text message option here, which is built into Streamlabs by default. This means you can change the font color, font type, or enable or disable this message completely and a little bit more, just like you would with any other Streamlabs alert. Now that you know how to customize each alert, you probably wanna know how to move the options that you took a ton of time setting up from one, and the good news is it's pretty easy to do so. Let's first take a look at copying from one alert to another before we get into backing up your alerts and importing from the templates that are included with the download. To copy from one alert to another, navigate to the alerts that you wanna copy from. Click on the Edit Custom Fields button found in the Custom Fields tab. Select all of the code inside of this section. You can do this by clicking inside and hitting Control plus A, or by right-clicking and hitting Select All. Copy the code using Control C or right-click and copy, and then hit Update on the alerts that you're copying from so that your settings aren't accidentally changed. Then navigate to the alerts you wanna to copy to. Click on Edit Custom Fields for the Custom Fields tab, then remove any of the code that's currently found in this box. Here you can use Select All and then hit Backspace. Then we want to paste in the code that we've just copied using Control plus V or right clicking and pasting. Click on Update and then click Save Settings and you can repeat this process as needed. Make sure to test out the alerts a few times and tweak any of the text options or other options if you need to. It's a good idea to just make sure and double check that all the options have been added in properly. And then of course you can feel free to make tweaks to each individual alert as well. Now let's check out backing up our alerts just in case we wanna save things. Navigate to the alerts you want to save, then click on edit custom fields found in the custom fields tab. Select all that's inside of the code section, which you can do by right clicking inside of the box and hitting select all, or just clicking inside of the box and using control plus A. Then copy the code using control C or right clicking and copying. Then hit update on your alerts that you're copying from so that you don't accidentally change any options. Then we wanna open up notepad or any text editor. Paste in the code that we've copied using Control plus V or right clicking and paste, and then saving a file. Please note it's best to save these as an unformatted.txt file or to change the file type to the extension .js, which is JavaScript. Now you can repeat this process if you have variants for each type of alert that you'd like to back up. Things should be pretty safe on Streamlabs to just save in there, but it's always a good idea if you wanna experiment with changes at a later time, or just simply set up a new account and import from there. Speaking of importing, let's go ahead and check out how we can import settings from our templates folder. The first thing you wanna do is view the images included in the templates folder to decide if you wanna use a specific template. There should be more templates added in after this video is created, so look forward to those. Then you wanna open the corresponding file in the notepad or any text editor. Select all inside of the code section, which you can do by hitting Control plus A or right clicking inside and using select all. Copy the code with Control plus C or right click and copy. Then navigate to the alerts that you wanna to copy to. Click the edit custom fields button found in the custom fields tab. Then we want to remove any code in the code box which we can do by clicking inside the box and using Control plus A or right clicking and hitting select all. Then we remove it by hitting backspace. Then paste the code that we've copied in, which we can use Control V or right click and paste. Then after all that's done, click update. And then finally click save settings. 
with a couple of tests being ran, we can double check to make sure that all the options are imported in properly and we can make any tweaks that we'd like. With everything that we just covered, you should be a pro at using the new Alert Maker. It's something we're really proud of and we wanted to make sure that we offered for free, but if there's any bugs or things that seem not to work properly, please shoot us a message via our contact form on our website. Feel free to leave any questions in the comments below. We do our best to get to as many as we possibly can. And don't forget to subscribe with notifications on. We might have a follow-up or two for this pack coming, but we'll have to see. As always, thanks for watching.